Thank you for joining Jennifer Shelton Associates in our 2019 Webinar Wednesday series. We are coming to you live from downtown Washington, D.C. Our webinars are every Wednesday and you can find the upcoming schedule on our website. Past webinars and all recordings are also on our website and on our YouTube channel. And with over 160 other recordings on federal contracting topics, all are complimentary. If you have questions for our speaker today, you can email them directly at the contact information you'll see on the last slide. Great, this is just a little bit about us. We are a Washington, D.C. based firm and provide services for federal contractors. This ranges from market analysis reports to proposal rating and also post award compliance. More information is on our website, so please visit us there. All right, our speaker today is Alan Scheitz, and he's going to be covering leveraging DOD acquisition forecasts for sales planning. Thank you for joining us today, Alan. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Hey, thanks, Mallory, and uh, just checking to make sure you can hear me okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out uh, today, and thank you uh, to Mallory and to Jennifer for uh, putting this on and uh, extending the invitation. So we're grateful to, to partner with you guys. So uh, let's talk about the leveraging uh, your Department of Defense acquisition forecast for sales planning. Hey, great. I can read. Okay. So what does that mean uh, there? So it's that time of year we're actually nearing the end of uh, Q1 for 2020. And um, it looks like the uh, the budget uh, is going to make it uh, finally here. So one of the things as a business that you uh, have to do is kind of understand where you want to go, right? So the forecast that the Department of Defense put out, I'll say it's scattered, but it's valuable uh, there. And I'll talk to you about uh, both of those uh, two uh, areas and how to overcome the, the scatteredness and to um, obtain the most value out of, you know, taking time out of your day to to go and do this. So I would say that if you could just dedicate uh, four to five hours or even one day just spending looking at forecast, right? Um, um, and that one day could be a Saturday. It could be, uh, you know, a Monday uh, where at that time of year where things kind of slow down a little bit uh, for some. So it's a good time to do that. So next slide, please. So when you're looking at uh, forecast, a couple of things that uh, you want to um, understand is that um, that forecast does not necessarily mean that those requirements are, are all funded. Uh, there. So a completely different uh, uh, webinar uh, is about how the funding process actually works, but at a high level. A program office uh, there, uh, and let's pick a program office, let's pick an aircraft or a major weapon system there. Let's say the B-52, right? It's been around for a long time. Everybody knows what that is. So this program office uh, creates a list of requirements or things that they want to accomplish, whether it be software upgrade for systems, maybe there's structural defects, maybe, uh, you know, whatever that requirement may be. Maybe they want to do some new studies on uh, breaking systems uh, they are coming out. So what they do in that program office is they, uh, through various means, right, they just don't sit around and throw throw darts uh, at items. And, uh, but through various means, they're able to come up with a list of, of requirements uh, that all are uh, designed to help uh, extend the longevity of uh, the the aircraft itself, right? So the B-52, it's getting close to almost 100 years of flight, right? Which is amazing. So these requirements uh, then uh, run their way through the program office up the uh, up the chain of command all the way to the Pentagon uh, there. And um, if you have a list of 50 requirements, uh, you've got at some point along the way, you've got a cut line. Uh, there. So some of the requirements uh, are going to make the cut, meaning uh, just like, a, you know, a Major League Baseball team, the player either makes the Major League team or they get it sent back to the minors, right? Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, they go away completely or the requirement goes away. It just means that it did not receive the funding as the funding made its way through uh, the the course that it has to run uh, there. So when you're looking at those forecasts, you've got to keep that in mind there that not all items on that forecast are necessarily going to be funded. And that includes items that may be listed as a recompete as well. There's no guarantee that uh, that programs that are out there right now, even though they may have an option year on them 
or um, you know, it's a program that's been in place for 20 years, there's no guarantee that program is actually going to be funded. And there, obviously, there, there's a number of variables that play into that uh, there. Um, so uh, these programs, these requirements, they're all jockeying for the funding, if you will. So you got to keep that in mind when you're looking for the forecast. Now, I've uh, listed the source uh, here. So this is actually a good source. I want to talk about uh, these sources and how they do this. So uh, back in, uh, let's see, we're in 20, almost 2020. So back in 2014, GSA took a look at and uh, efforted as we were on the beta team for doing that, not the, don't, don't confuse that with the beta.sim. We were on the beta team where GSA had a, uh, um, a high level objective of pulling in all forecasts from all government agencies and creating it into a single system. Uh, there, I can tell you that uh, there is an element of GSA. I do not have that GSA site listed here. It is out there, um, but uh, they were unsuccessful at doing that and for a number of reasons uh, there. Um, a lot of the reasons are there was no mandate for there to be a standardized forecast. That was number one uh, uh, there. So, um, and when I say standardized, meaning that if I'm running forecast for uh, some office and Department of Navy, there's no guide that's telling me that I've got to have certain data uh, in my forecast. So I'm really kind of at my discretion. Now the mandate lies that every agency will do a forecast. It just doesn't say how you would do it. So there's, it doesn't manage those agencies down at the micro level uh, there. So the agencies could do as little as just list, hey, these are the 20 upcoming items or 20 upcoming programs uh, there. Um, now the agencies are, you know, they're not uh, being cynical about it. They're, they're listing out uh, the, uh, you know, what is the program, when do they believe uh, that program will be uh, procured, uh, under what set aside or what strategy will that uh, effort be procured. And when I say strategy, what's the acquisition strategy for that, meaning will it be set aside for small business, will it be full and open, will it be on the GSA schedule. Um, so some of those elements may or may not be in the different uh, forecast that you see in there. Another problem when I say scattered or an array of data uh, there, um, that being the array of data, but another problem is that the method of, of that, meaning some of those forecasts you'll find are in PDFs. So, um, you know, if you don't live in the PDF world every day, those can be very difficult to navigate uh, there from, a, you know, unless you just print it out and kind of run the old fashioned route, uh, pen and paper. Um, some of them will be Excel, some of them will be uh, Word documents. Uh, now, some agencies, such as uh, the Department of Homeland Security, they've actually created their own acquisition site, uh, their forecast acquisition site. Um, so you, if you went out and Googled Department of Homeland Security for, uh, you know, procurement forecast or forecast, uh, it'll take you to that site. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, it's a good site uh, uh, there. Uh, th it does have limitations on what you can do from a standpoint of uh, looking at it uh, in totality and then picking at a, you know, picking at it at a, at a high level. So you really have to kind of know what you're looking for, which kind of defeats the purpose of a forecast uh, there. Um, so be prepared to see a lot of different, see a lot of different things uh, forecast put out a lot of different ways uh, there and in some cases with different language now not not entirely different language but sometimes they may say this is going to be a small business set aside other times they may identify it as competition type uh, there um, uh, as far as at the high level so they could alter some of the uh, high level ways of their their uh, categorizing the different data inputs uh, there. So you, you want to keep that in mind. Now, I've kind of laid out a process that, uh, you know, um, that's, that's worked for uh, a number of companies that we've worked with, uh, as well as early on in, in my career after leaving the Air Force, when I was working for some large uh, prime contractors there, we, we went through this the same effort. So I laid out uh, based this based on my experience of what I've seen as work is first you want to you know what is where do you want to go uh, in 2020 right so 
you know, what, what, what's your interest in, in growing your business as it relates to uh, the areas in the federal government that you want to pursue uh, there? And I would say that uh, um, historical data, such as your federal procurement data system, can help, help guide that uh, there. So you can go back and look at actual contracts um, in the past to see, you know, who's buying a lot of the information or, or a lot of the capabilities or goods and services that I actually uh, produce, I as a, a company actually produce. So you can find that information there and that will kind of uh, uh, tell you that maybe you should be looking more in Department of Homeland Security or or maybe it's Department of Navy uh, there. So, um, and then you would uh, go into that forecast and um, you can, again, you could, there's a, obviously a lot of it's public information uh, there, so you can scour it. Uh, one of the things that we do as a company, so we actually do it on request. So as our uh, user base and bid speed, as they request different forecasts, we've got facilities in place to go and actually upload the data, make it a little easier to search uh, there. Um, so there's, there's other systems out there as well. So um, I'll be, you know, uh, unbiased uh, to it, uh, you know, in, in this process. So um, and plus, there's the the, the data is all public. So, the data by itself will not do anything. You you have to navigate the documents. Uh, you have to get in, um, pick out those requirements that are of interest to you, whether it's janitorial services or whether it's uh, uh, financial consulting. Um, you know, there's a number of services out there. So, by you know certain means, you know, and you, I mean, we're all intelligent people here online. So. Um, when you get into the document, you'll see, okay, this is the way I'm going to need to search it. Um, you know, a, a good common area is, well, let me start at my NAICS area. Well, some of those forecasts don't have it broken down by NAICS. Uh, so that's why I'm saying you got to be cautious and be a little bit flexible, too, in your, your own navigation uh, of those. A lot of them that I've come across are really good about putting points of contact uh, out there by name. Some of them aren't very good about putting an email or, uh, you know, a phone number, right? So, but the points of contact are there. So I would engage those points of contact. If there's an item that jumps out on one of those forecasts that are interesting to you, reach out to that person. Tell them where you found, you know, hey, I, I saw your name under from this acquisition forecast. And, um, you know, script out some questions to ask them. You know, is this a forecasted item? Uh, going to receive funding this year, um, it, you know, has has there been a source of solder RFI uh, uh, accomplished on this? Is this a market research? Are you open to a meeting with our organization so we can talk about some of the things that we've done that are similar? So, so begin to build that relationship and and do that due diligence, uh, capture due diligence that you would do with that point of contact there um, as you run through that. Now. Um, Another good way to do it is also once you identify that agency, you, a lot of times you'll you'll see okay that's coming out of a specific office uh, there in the forecast and you can derive that out of out of there. You can actually go back into the new beta SAM uh, on the, the old FBO uh, there. I know there's a confusion on that, but you can go back and actually see what's what has that office done in the last two years. You know, is there a similar program that's out there? Um, that uh, they have in place already. We've seen over the last year and a half, two years, we've seen a lot of consolidation of, of contracts, um, taking four and five contracts, merging them into, into a single, sometimes uh, IDIQ contract with multiple awards, sometimes making it a single award uh, task order contract. Uh, there. So you can go back and do your research uh, there and uh, see if there's some opportunities. Maybe this, maybe this particular item on the forecast is one that has actually um, undergone a couple of RFIs, right? Um, market research information that the government launches is good for 12 months. So um, once that 12 months expires, then they actually have to go back technically uh, back out and um, engage that again, unless they make changes right now. Um, and it's, it's like, again, that gets into a, a whole different path, uh, rabbit hole there, but uh, not for this uh, for this briefing. So you can go back and take a look and find, are there similar efforts out there that uh, maybe I could go back and do some, uh, what I'll call backwards business development uh, and uh, exploration on those to see if they are aligning uh, with that. And that's some of the information you can follow back up with uh, the point of contact there. So. 
um, you can say, hey, I found this item. Uh, is it similar to this project? Is this the same project uh, there? And then I would say, you know, depending on that information, maybe you already um, craft out a white paper, uh, but build out a white paper, you, you know, on the, around that particular opportunity. Uh, put down on paper, you know, how you would actually accomplish it. And I'm not saying write a proposal, but just bullet point it out, right? So if it's, uh, and I'll just use the term janitorial services. Maybe it's janitorial services for the VA in a certain geographical area. You know, how would you engage that? How do you engage that in other areas uh, there? And it may be as simple as saying, hey, we do this for uh, Target in uh, uh Minneapolis, right? Uh, maybe you do janitorial services for all the Target stores in, in Minneapolis. Uh, there. So you can kind of describe how you're doing that commercially and, and just put together a white paper and kind of uh, sketch out an architecture of how you do it and and uh, re-engage with that point of contact. So I'm getting a little bit into more of the business development side of it, but I think these are some things to think about as you're looking at these uh, forecast and and uh, when we use the term leveraging the forecast, I think that's some of the leverage uh, um, jump off points that you would would use uh, there. So or launch points uh, there. So then you can always take that if you're having problems engaging with that point of contact, schedule a meeting with the the small and uh, disadvantaged business utilization folks, uh, or what's often referred to as the OZDU. These I happen to have met with the um, head of business development for the SBA uh, just yesterday uh, in D.C. And, and the Ozibus are um, one that uh, they work with closely um, to the SBA does to make sure that they are meeting all of their small business goals. So these Ozibus have the charter for making sure that the agencies they represent are meeting their small business goals. Now, maybe you're not a small business out there. Maybe you're you're a, you're outside of that category uh, there. Um, I would say that these are still good entry points to um, getting you into a point of contact that will actually call you back uh, there. So maybe you go in, uh, you, you're a, you're not a small business, and you go in and you meet with them. And say, hey, I've got some partners that are small business. We'd love to maybe figure out a way to help you meet these numbers here, but we need to understand more about the requirements uh, there. We got it from the forecast. So you're not just going in with no information. You're going in with very targeted projects uh, that have been listed by law uh, out there uh, in the public domain uh, there. And then obviously staying engaged. So there's source of thoughts, RFIs, uh, that you know we would advocate that that is one of the best, if not, um, um, uh, the number one uh, way to market your business uh, directly to an organization. So maybe you get in and go back uh, into some source of thoughts, RFIs that have come out of that particular office you're trying to engage with, and you um, answer the mail uh, on some of those that are similar efforts and, and start to form relationships or start to uh, get in there and engage with them, get your company known because that requirement that you're looking at on the forecast is going to be coming out of that office. So if you're sending your information capability statement, albeit uh, to an expired source of thought, you've got the attention already. Uh, now be prepared to get an, a response back of this is expired uh, there. Um, we've, we've actually got quite a bit of language uh, there that helps those uh, stay in. But most of the time they will take that even though it's expired because it is a 12-month process uh, there. And then again, I kind of mentioned that if you're a, a larger business, uh, you can work with your partners. Uh, there, but if you're a smaller business, you could do the same thing. So um, you're working with your partners uh, that uh, maybe have some past performance in in a particular office, and and, and marrying their past performance with uh, some of the items that you're seeing on the forecast in order to achieve your different uh, your objectives there. So it's a good way to create a win-win uh, relationship with uh, partners, as well as expand into a new partner base uh, there as well. So um, I've tried to, again, I've tried to lay out at a real high level. And, and again, uh, you know, we've kind of skipped a rock on what you really need to do, but I would re you know, very much encourage you to um, at least take four to five hours, go look and sit down and do some research. And it's, I'm not saying that has to be a, you know, a constant four hour exam there. Um, so break it out, say, I mean, I'm going to go in and, and discover that Department of uh, Homeland Security acquisition page and 
and kind of learn how they do it. Uh, and maybe you're in there and you see some things, you have to go off and do some other things. You come back to it and, and continue to do your strategy uh, there. But uh, first and foremost, you certainly want to develop a 2020 strategy uh, and then leverage a lot of these uh, um, areas out there to help them guide you to um, a higher probability of winning some new business, uh, and creating some new revenue streams. So uh, that's all I have uh, um, at this moment uh, here. So Mallory, I, I appreciate uh, the time there. And, and again, uh, you know, I, I encourage any of you, if you have any other questions or want to bounce some ideas off of me, I'm happy to um, uh, discuss that with you uh, to see where we can go. So Mallory, Jennifer, I sure appreciate the opportunity and uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Have a Merry Christmas. Yeah, thank you, Alan, for joining us today. If you have any questions, please send an email or call at the phone number and email shown on your screen. And this concludes this webinar. Thank you.